Hi, welcome to Terrifying World. We're going to talk today about smallpox and the Colombian exchange. So as you know, when the Europeans went to the Americas, they brought back with them corn, quinine, tomatoes, potatoes, chocolate, blood on their hands, you know, things like that. And in turn, they left the natives with their filthy religions and their filthy diseases. This is what we do, you know. This is what's referred to as the Colombian exchange because that's what happens. We exchange ideas Ideas and disease. Ideas and disease. Smallpox has been endemic to the Eurasian landmass in Africa since forever, and because of that, the people living in these areas share a common immunity. They, they, they share a common disease reservoir. But the people in the native people in the Americas and Australia and New Zealand did not share this reservoir, and this would get to be a problem later on. When Columbus and his crew get to the island of Hispaniola, Hispaniola of course being the island that houses the modern Dominican Republic in Haiti, uh, when, when he gets to Hispaniola there's already there are already people living there of course. It's a tribe called the Arawaks and it's estimated that about a million Arawaks are living on Hispaniola in 1492. The island of Hispaniola is located in a great strategic location and the Spanish love this because they're interested in power politics and profits. And the land there is great for cultivation, and they need people to work this land, and they need people to work in these mines, but they do not want to pay them, and they want them to work in there whether they like it or not. The Europeans also bring with them, of course, measles and smallpox, and then spontaneously, though not intentionally, the natives start dropping like flies because they have no immunity, and this is especially lethal to them. We can't can't say what the exact numbers are, but it's estimated that between 80 to 95 percent of the native population of Hispaniola died within the first 100 to 150 years following 1492. It's important to remember that there's no evidence of bioterror here. Nobody knew what germ theory was. People still believed in the old miasma thing. Smallpox was just a part of life for most people. It was just an inevitable thing. So the absence of natives clears the land for Europe. European settlement. But then the Europeans take a look around and think, hey, wait a minute, guys. Who are we going to exploit now? Well, remember when I said that people on the African landmass share the same disease reservoirs as people on the Eurasian landmass? Well, the people down in Hispaniola sure knew it, and this is one of the key things that kicks up the African slave trade in earnest. It all seems as if it happened in the blink of an eye. They began importing African slaves to Hispaniola in 1517. 10,000 slaves in 1764. 15,000 slaves in 1771. 27,000 slaves in 1786. 40,000 slaves in 1787. They exported cotton and made the settlements there very, very rich. And I'm just using Hispaniola as an example, but this happened all over the Americas. And smallpox, smallpox was the real reason why, smallpox was the reason why all, this, all the natives were wiped out and replaced by African slaves and really giving the African slave trade some real wheels. Now as I said earlier, there was no intentional biological warfare going on. And I know that can be a little bit hotly debated, uh, most famously the case of Lord Jeffrey Amherst. I am the Lord, Lord Jeffrey Amherst. In 1763 there was a war, it was called Pontiac's War. It was a war that was launched against the British because of their policies after the French Indian War. One of Amherst's colonels, Colonel Henry Bouquet, asked Amherst if it was cool if he gave him the go ahead to, uh, to, give, him, to give the natives some infected smallpox blankets. And it seems as if Amherst gave him the go-ahead to go do it, though we don't know for certain if that's the case. You think bringing infected smallpox blankets into the savages' living quarters will help our cause? Hmm. Well, I think it's worth a shot. You are evil, sir, and I like it. I like it a lot. Take these to the savages.
But what this does show is that people are used to smallpox by now, and now they're starting to toy with it. They're starting to use it and mess with it. That's what we do, because that's what humans do. We mess with things. And could it be true? Could it be true that we could use smallpox to fight smallpox? Can that happen? I don't know. We might just have to find out next time on Terrifying World.